Hello. Thank you so much for joining me and my guest today. This is the inaugural broadcast of Face to Face, hosted by Watchmen for the Nations. We're so glad that you've joined us. We're hoping that you will enjoy our time together as much as we enjoy having you here, right here with us. My guest today is the founder of Watchmen for the Nations. I say founder, but really originator of Watchmen for the Nations. It began in his heart many years ago. And I want to welcome David Damien. Hello, David. It's so good to have you on Face to Face. And my first question to you is, how are you doing today? Uh, hi, Lauren. It's so good to be here. And uh, uh, my day is very good. And I'm so excited for uh, this uh, uh, season that we're entering in. But just one thing is uh, that uh, uh, actually I'm not the real founder of Watchmen for the Nations. Uh, it was Pastor Bob Birch uh, from Canada that uh, gathered a group of people. And uh, I was part of that. And he uh, wanted to look for a, a name for this group that will stand on guard. And uh, knowing his gift and knowing his calling as a real uh, giant as a real ambassador of intercession, I uh, came up with the verse from Isaiah 62, on your walls, I have appointed watchmen. And uh, actually, I uh, mentioned to Pastor Bob, this is your call, uh, as uh, you have been praying for this nation for many, 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 many years. And uh, we call it watchmen for the nation. And then really when uh, it's very interesting, we're entering into the history of the founding foundation of this uh, movement. And then uh, Pastor Gideon was uh, there, came in and I am from Egypt, Pastor Gideon is from China and others from different countries. So I said to Pastor Bob, uh, we need to look at the name because it's not really Watchmen for the nation, but it's actually Watchmen for the nations because Many of us carry nations in our heart. And uh, he said, but we, it's already sent to be registered. So they said, let me check. So they sent to the res registering office. And it was amazing uh, when our uh, 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 person uh, contacted them. And they said, it's amazing that you're calling now because I have the file on my desk. She said, can we just do a change of name from Watchmen for the Nation to Watchmen for the Nations? So he said, can you please uh, rewrite it and sign it and send it to me right away? We did it and it went through. So uh, I'm in debt to the founder for this big movement. And he is a man of prayer, a man of humility and a man of heart that uh, the Lord used in Canada. And he adopted me as uh, a spiritual son and we traveled together. So, and Pastor Gideon joined later and we, really connected heart heart and then uh, the uh, movement began and now it's everywhere almost. And David, when you began, did was it not, uh, um, your desire was not to have a conference, as I recall, is, is that That's so true. or how did it, what was in your heart? It started as a prayer movement and then uh, that was uh, uh, in the beginning and then uh, there was a prophetic voice that came through Pastor Emil, and uh, he met with us as a watchman team. He is uh, a prophet from Egypt, and really I had an encounter with him years before, and I really came to trust him. So he came to our team, and then suddenly he looked at me and he said, there is a gathering. Uh, at this time, the, we didn't know the word gathering. It, it was not a common name, but he said, there's a conference that will be done next year, and you have two months, two months to plan it. And that's the time when uh, really in my heart, I didn't really feel I want to do another conference because in my heart was not about another conference. Uh, so the, the time passed and then we met together as uh, watchmen again. And uh, I remember Pastor Gideon asking me wh wh why we don't begin to look into it. And the question came, what's in your heart? And that is when I began uh, verbalizing the deep desire in my heart. I said, uh, uh, there are many conferences and people do it perfectly well. There's a lot of teaching, a lot of preaching and a lot of impartation. 
we need another expression of the body of Christ when they come together. And they said, what, how do you see it? And I said, I, I don't want speakers announced. So people don't come for the speakers, but they come for the Lord. So this time it will be like the feast in the old days uh, in, the, in the Old Testament where God calls the people to come and celebrate him and hear his voice. So I said, it's not that there is no speakers, but we don't want people to come for them. So I wanted the, the no announcement of names. So whoever is coming, coming for the Lord. The, the second part I said, I don't want to have a, a human structure, half an hour worship, uh, then a message, then a ministry. Then I said, I wanted to, to leave it as a, a flow of the Holy Spirit. We come, give ourselves, and if the worship takes the whole session, wonderful. If it takes 10 minutes, wonderful. Then we flow with the Holy Spirit. And then we began talking about the, the whole concept of people coming for him, not for what they want to get, but for the Lord himself. And when the Lord is pleased, when we come together for him, when he's pleased, he, he blesses the people. We are always blessed when he and when his heart is satisfied so we said we wanted the people coming to honor the lord and to worship him and then out of that flows and we wanted the people longing for that presence so basically the longing of our heart at this time is not to equip the people per se and not to teach the people per se even these are very important elements of our christian walk but we wanted a people that will come to adore the Lord and let the Lord do what he wants. Uh, uh, it's like preparing a dwelling place for the presence of God. And that was the longing and the heart of the gatherings from its start. The first one was in Whistler, British Columbia, Canada. And from there, now we are different cultures, different nations that we have gone through. It's an amazing thing, David, that um, in my association with Watchman for the Nations and yourself, the ethos has never changed. It has still been always just meeting with the Lord and uh, he leads and he guides. And it's extraordinary, this whole thing about no agenda, which is absolutely for me, uh, the most amazing thing that the Holy Spirit is actually good at running his own meetings. <laughs> he can do it, he can do it. And then the wonderful thing is for the attendees, as the meetings progress, they too learn that sensitivity and that swinging with the Holy Spirit and moving with him. It's quite an amazing thing that I've noticed take place. We're going to be talking about 2020. What a year it's, it was. We're now in 2021. It doesn't feel as though we ever left 2020. But the Lord was speaking things there and he was really wanting to engage. What was in your heart? What did you feel came from 2020 for the body of Christ? Uh, well, thank you, Lauren, for this time. And I'm really enjoying our talk together. And uh, I really feel that uh, most of the world, uh, not only the Christian family, uh, also recognize that there is a sudden change that happened that for some was surprising, for some they were anticipating it. And, uh, uh, let me take you back to uh, the year before, because the Lord spoke to us. Uh, and actually, there were many uh, prophetic voices in the body of Christ that spoke about these things. But none of us had the, had the, uh, uh, the capacity to envision it this way. I remember when we were meeting as leadership in, in 2018, in the beginning, the Lord spoke very clearly to us to mark from Feast of Trumpets 2018 to the Feast of Trumpets 2019. The Lord said, this is a year unlike any other year, and I'm preparing for uh, Hebrews 12. And in Hebrews 12, the Lord speaks very clearly about his voice that once shook the earth. Now it is going not only to shake the earth, but to shake the heavens. And the, the purpose of it is not the shaking but the purpose of it is the emerging ecclesia, the emerging church, the body of Christ, that he wants to display 
the body of Christ to the world and in that the enemy will hate uh, and there will be uh, an impending clash of two kingdoms the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness and the enemy knows his time is short once the shaking of the heavens start so there will be visible manifestations across the world of that clash the Lord has been speaking to us and sometimes in our capacity of understanding nobody could dreamt that the magnitude of what the Lord spoke to us uh, when he said 2020 will start a new era that we heard that in the last couple of years uh, 2018 2019 and actually when we as leadership met together to seek the face of the Lord in 2018 the Lord spoke to us very clearly and he said to mark this year and we knew it's it's going to be a Jewish year from the Feast of Trumpets 2018 to the Feast of Trumpets 2019 and the Lord this year is unlike any other year uh, and the, the, I got this feeling inside of my spirit because I remember the Lord spoke to us in 2008 and he said uh, early 2008 he said mark this year and again it was from the Feast of Trumpets 2008 to the Feast of Trumpets 2009 and the Lord spoke very clearly simple words but I never heard it before he said I will confront the systems that have defiled my name and I was surprised at this time and I said Lord what systems are you talking about he said the systems that have taken the heart of my bride away the system the world systems and he said mark this year on your calendars I will begin to shake the systems of this world and he gave us the name of the first one and it was the financial system so I we shared together we didn't have a clue of what will that mean and then he said the one after will be the religious system well what happened in 2008 on the day of uh, the Feast of Trumpets the stock market collapsed and we all knew there is a shaking that's coming so that was in, a, in, in that year and it marked 10 years of walking together with the Lord in that then he comes in 2018 and he says mark this year and he gave us the feeling of Hebrews 12 his voice once shook the earth now not only the earth but the heavens and the the focus was not about the shaking but the focus was about I have been preparing my bride my body for a spiritual authority that I'm about to release I'm about to display my kingdom on earth as it is in heaven and the enemy will not be happy with that so the enemy knowing his time is short he's going to unleash uh, his his uh, uh, anger and his attack and it will be a clash of the kingdoms but uh, uh, be be at peace because the the uh, don't be afraid you little flock because the father is pleased to give you the kingdom so when the lord spoke to us about this we felt that this time it's going to be a shaking in the heavenless in hebrews 12 it speaks about the heavens shaking which i understood it as the power supply the spiritual powers in the heavenlies that reinforced the systems of this world so as the Lord began speaking to us there there was something very interesting happened in this year there was always whenever we met there was always a roar there was always a trumpet blast it, it was so shocking that sometimes it came out of nowhere the whole people whole arena hundreds of people will begin to go into a roar or a shout and I was really surprised because after it was in, 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 in France it was in Malaysia it was in Korea it was in China it was everywhere we went and I asked the Lord at this time and the Lord uh, what is that I said to him he said uh, he gave me Amos 3 verse 8 the lion has roared who but not fear 
So I felt as if the Lord is preparing uh, by a roar through his body. So when the lion roar, the body echoes that and releases that. So as we continued, the Lord began speaking about a day. He said, there is a day coming when I want the whole global body of Christ, the global family, a representation to release that roar uh, in the airwaves. And as we continued to seek the Lord, the Lord spoke to us about the Feast of Trumpets 2019. And it was September 30th. We had a global gathering and we called it the Global Feast of Trumpets. And we released the trumpet blast and the roar and the shofar sound from all over the world. And as we released that, there was something in the spirit realm because the Lord said, from 2020 on, I will shake all the nations. And from that, the, the shaking will not end until I get uh, my bride to be revealed on earth as it is in heaven. And that's actually the Lord's, uh, the prayer that the Lord ta taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So none of us imagined, and actually after we released that roar, the fear of the Lord hit us, and the Lord said, I'm giving you three months, October, November, December 2019. Uh, prepare yourselves, because from 2020 on, I will not uh, relent until I will have it all. So uh, we, I didn't expect, nobody expected, but we all talked about the new era starting from 2020, and little we knew that literally the Lord will shake the whole earth. F uh, uh, financially, politically, economically, everything in the world is shaking. And we're still in that transition. And I don't think we will ever go back again to what was, because God is going to reveal uh, uh, his body uh, in a kingdom fashion, aligned with heaven, so his kingdom on earth and his kingdom in heaven are going to align together and the world will see, uh, uh, watch as the two clash, as the clash of the two kingdoms will, will emerge. God said to us, don't be afraid, you little flock, because the father is pleased to give you the kingdom. David, this is always such good news to know that it's not what we see as chaos taking place is actually organized chaos from the side of heaven. God knows very well what he's doing. I so much want to talk to you further about this. I think we have run out of time at this time, but I'm going to ask if we, the next time we come together, if we can pick this up and really talk about how the body of Christ can prepare herself and how she can be part of this um, emerging ecclesia that God so desires for his bride at this time. I want to say thank you so much for your time and for joining us and for more of you. So get ready because I'm going to be inviting you back again and again so that we can just get ourselves into the place where we can see clearly what God is doing. Thank you so much, David Damien. Thank you, we'll Lauren. Again. It's a joy to be with you. Thank you. To everyone else, I just want to say to you, I hope that you enjoyed today's program. And above all things, do join us again. And I want to tell you, enjoy him as much as he enjoys you. 